Uh, hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. Uh, today we will try to go through a lab in the Unity tutorial. Swap out your uh, asserts. Uh, let's get started. This is a very exciting moment. We've worked on these projects for all this time using those, uh, let's face it, kind of boring primitive shapes. It takes a lot of professionalism and self-control to do that. So I think it's about time we received our well-deserved reward. By the end of this lesson, we will have replaced all of those primitive objects with beautiful 3D art. When it comes to choosing the artwork for your project, you'll have access to the entire course library, which is filled with amazing vehicles, characters, animals, props, particles, and textures. But in addition to all of those, We'll also browse the Unity Asset Store for even more options. The Unity Asset Store is filled with free and paid content that you can download and import into your project. There's so much amazing stuff on there that it will be tempting to go crazy, downloading a ton of random stuff and throwing it into your project just because you can. But there are two really important things to keep in mind before you do that. First, you want the art style of your project to be consistent. So combining the more stylized characters we've used up to this point with photorealistic ones would look off. Second, you want your project to run smoothly without a lot of lag by using lightweight, simple assets. The more fancy high resolution assets you add, the slower your project will run. So we're going to try and stick with simple, consistent assets that will make our projects look great. And to make all that happen, I'll see you in Unity. So we have a lot of our gameplay set up now, so we can move around and dodge all of these enemy obstacles coming our way. We can grab these power-ups. Now let's get started from moving our project from a prototype to a bit more complete project. To do that, we'll need to import our assets that we're going to use. Now under this video, you'll find a link to download the course asset library, which you can download and import into your project. Once it's been imported, you will find the course library folder in your project window. And now in our course library, we can take a look at all of the different options that we have to use in our project. So for now, just go take a look at all the different assets that you can use and think about which ones you're going to start using to replace all of the different things in your scene. Like in my case, the walls, my player, my prefabs and my power up. So that way it fits the design of the game I was looking to create. So what you're going to do is click on the link to download the course library asset files and then import them into your project. And then you can take a look at that library inside of the project window to find different assets to replace with your player and non-player objects. Now it's your turn. Now we have our assets imported and ready to go. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to replace our player object with one of these assets. Now in order to do that, we're actually going to turn the player into a prefab first. So now you can see that player ball has been added as a prefab in the prefabs folder. If I double click on player, it then opens up prefab mode. So now in our scene, we have that prefab view and you can see our ball. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select one of my animals here and I'll pick a forest. In my forest animals, I have all of these different options. I have doe, foxes, moose, take one of these stags. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on this animal stag asset and drop it into the hierarchy where our player prefab. Now you can see that our animal stag has now become a child of our original player up. Ball is still at the bottom. 
and we have the stag here. So what's happening here is actually something called nesting prefab. So we have this prefab here that's a child of an original object. And in fact, because the animal stag is a prefab, if we ever were to make changes to our animal stag, for example, it would actually add those changes into this prefab here. So it's kind of cool. Uh, you can use the really cool effects, like if you want a tree that has some uh, mushrooms around mushrooms themselves, nested prefabs can allow you to do some really cool things, add a lot of different prefabs, and then just have one prefab to hold. Notice in the game view that our stag here was added to our scene. It's a little large, it's much larger than our ball is, so we're actually going to scale like four times as much. Okay, cool, not too bad. Looks pretty good. Now, one of the issues with our stag here is that it actually does not have a collider on it. So in fact, we'll need to add a collider. So with our animal stag selected, we add a, add a box collider. Set the box collider. I'm actually going to select the edit collider. Now we have our box collider here so that we can track our collisions again. And it's at a good size. I'll uncheck the edit collider box. Now in order to make this player ball disappear, we can actually just Select the player, the parent object. Under player, we can uncheck the mesh render and actually that will remove that ball from our... I don't actually need that sphere stag prefab. And the one thing that we'll do is on our animal stag, I'm going to... Now if I leave our arrow, you'll see my stag is now in play. We'll see what happens. You can see that it has this cool running... What happens when we hit... Oh, oh, oh. Cool. So the bat play around. I think what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, looks a little strange at some point. Oh, definitely kind of fun. We'll have to change that. Oh, and now I'm just side. Cool. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take your player object from your scene in your hierarchy, drag it into the prefabs folder so you can make a player prefab. Double click on the player prefab so that it opens up the prefab mode. In prefab mode, you're then going to go into the course library folder that we imported. Go under Animals, select something that you want to use, or you can even use a character, whichever one fits your game. Vehicles, whatever it may be. In my case, I chose Animals, because this is like our deer here running through a valley. Drag whichever asset you want to use into the hierarchy. It will actually nest underneath that player object. So it's helpful because now we don't need to use that sphere anymore. We can just use our chosen asset. If you want to remove your original sphere, from the game, just select the player object, uncheck the sphere collider and the mesh renderer so that both, and make sure on the asset you've imported that you apply a box collider or a capsule collider or a ball collider, whichever one fits with the shape of whatever you're working with. When you exit your prefab mode, you can see that the asset you've chosen is now in the scene. And then when you press play, you can test it out. Now it's your turn. So we've replaced our player with this stag model. Now, in our assets folder for our project, we have this whole course library available to use all of these different models and assets if you want to. However, there are other ways that you can also get more assets for your project, and that's using the Unity Asset Store. You can find a link to the Asset Store beneath this video. After you click on that, you'll be in the Unity Asset Store page. And you can see you can actually scroll through the Asset Store, a lot of different options that you can use, different things like sound effects, plugins to help with your editor in case you need it, tools from other companies and organizations, so you can see all the really cool options there are that you can actually grab to use for your projects. A really cool thing, in fact, is under our popular assets section, you can see here 
this organization, Sinti Studios. So in fact, all of the assets provided for this course were provided through Sinti Studios. So if we actually go to the top, search for assets, and type in Sinti, you can see all of these different options of a bunch of different packs that they've created. One's for city themes, one for adventure. This one seems kind of cool if you're doing an outdoor forest or something. A lot of varying different prices from $4 to $50, so a lot of different options. Another cool thing that they have is they actually have assets specifically for mobile ready use. So you can go in and check in all of the different options. A lot of these asset packs are really great. They all have five stars, a lot of really good reviews. So definitely worth checking that out. Now I mentioned the mobile ready assets. So in fact, if we actually go at the top and type low poly and we search for those, you can see that there's all these different low poly assets that we can use and so Especially for a game like ours, we don't need a lot of really high quality or what you would call high poly. So those are different characters and models and props that have a lot of high definition to it. So low poly, like with our player character, helps to decrease the amount of work that your computer has to do when somebody's playing your game. So low poly assets can be really good, especially if you're going to create a mobile game or something. Low poly assets help to make sure that your phone doesn't just instantly lose all of its battery because it's trying to use some really high quality models and assets in the game. Other cool things you can do, we can actually see the different prices, the different options. So we can select like free assets and this will give us a list of all of these different free assets that we can grab online. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of different free options in case you want to try some on your own. And even select by ratings. So if I select five star on the ratings on that sidebar option, you can see the free assets that have really high ratings, which is super cool. One really cool asset pack that I found for my project was this free Simple Gems Ultimate Animated Customizable Pack. So there's all of these different options that I can use to use for my power up. So that's pretty useful. It even has this little heart, which is helpful. It's nice and low poly, so that way it doesn't impact the performance of my game. So that's nice too. So I'm just going to click on this button and follow the prompts to add this asset to my project. Just follow the instructions below on how to import assets from the asset store. And now if you look under your project window, the gems ultimate pack has been added to all of my assets. Just to make this a little bit more organized, I'm actually going to create a new folder for any asset store assets. So I'll just call this folder asset store. And then I'm actually gonna drag and drop the gems ultimate pack into the asset store. So now I can see if I download any more assets from the asset store that I want to use, I'll just put it in this folder so it doesn't clutter up my entire assets folder. So even if you think that you have all the different assets and models that you need, it's always good to check the asset store, see what's available, see what you can play around with. It saves you a lot of effort yourself having to go and create your own assets, which is helpful. So what you should do is check out the asset store for nice low poly assets that you can use in your scene, then add them and organize them in your project. Now it's your turn. So now we've imported even more assets that we can use. We've set up our player. Now we should set up all of the other placeholders that we have. So things like our walls here and some of our other prefabs. So now I'm gonna go and replace and add in assets to use in place of these cubes in our power up. All right, cool. So I did a little bit of messing around with all the different prefab, a lot more so. You can kind of see right off the bat, I removed those walls I had and I changed them into these rocks. That way I have where that wall was supposed to be. And then when I press play, we can move around. You'll see that I can run into the rock wall parts that I can pick up. You can see all of the different animals and objects. We got these rocks that spawn. They tumble or something like that. 
I also kind of changed the rotations on some of the different animals. So now when I get bumped by that, magically rotate. Uh, and I'm stuck. So some small bugs that we'll iron out later. See if we can get this dough off. Ah, uh, there you go. Cool. So definitely a lot of fixing we need to do. Weird stuff. Definitely still on areas now because of those rocks, but we'll it. So what you're going to do is just clean up your scene a little bit. If you have any walls that you're using, you can replace those walls. And then I went in and replaced all the different assets in each of my prefabs. So I added fabs that I had already had, like the animal dough, one into a rock, that sphere I had, and the power-up I changed to that cool little heart asset store. So go in, rearrange things in your scene, go replace all the different prefabs that you have uh, for whatever. So we've cleaned up our scene a lot with all of these new assets from our course library, as well as ones that we downloaded from the asset store. Now we have one last thing to do, just to kind of make our game feel a little bit nicer. We have this white backdrop for our ground here, which doesn't really look really good. So I'm actually going to change that really quick. So in my project window underneath assets, I'm actually going to go into the course library, select textures. I'm actually going to select this graphic and drag straight on let go it applies it onto that ground plane that i had now there's some issues i could probably make this a little bit more high resolution and i can actually so actually in the ground folder there's also a materials folder if i select the grass one the grass material that can actually change the tiling so higher that's a little bit too much play around with the tiling to make it look however you want it and then another thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uncheck specular highlights and reflect as grass is generally not reflective. So you can see that I way that that by unchecking those options. If you wanted to too, you could play around more. You could change how metallic an object looks if you were going that. I think that looks really cool. Looks really good for now. Game generally works, which I'm happy with. I can move around, dodge all of these obstacles coming down my way try and avoid running animals and rocks as they come down the scene so overall very satisfied so what you're gonna do is go into your assets folder you can select different texture around or place it with any background different options that you can use whatever fits for your game so that way it looks a little bit now it's your So we've made it to the end of this lesson. Added in some nice polish to our game. So we added in some of these assets to make everything look a bit nicer, like this ground to have our model for our character. All of these rocks replaced instead of that wall we had. If we play our our deer running around, bumping into things, we can pick up all of these hearts that are in the scene. We have these rocks tumbling down. All of these animals right so we learned about some new concepts and skills that we can use. We learned a little bit about different assets that we can use, how we can use them, the importance of things like high poly versus low poly assets and models. We even added some assets from the asset store 
just to help add to our game. We made some changes to our prefabs, like our enemies, and so we nested some prefabs underneath the original enemy prefab that we had. And then we also learned a little bit about materials on each of our different textures, like our grass, where we don't want our grass to have reflections on it. So we removed that from our game. With that, now you're gonna go clean up your game, polish it, and make it look as cool as possible. Fix all the different bugs for any of your movement or your interactions with different objects in your game. Replace your different blocks, add some more things to the environment, maybe make some more enemies or obstacles in your way. So that way, by the end, you'll have an amazing project to show off. We'll see you soon. Uh, so far so good. Um, for now, we have created a simple, let's say a simple game where we can control an animal to avoid the collection with other kind of animal. And we can um, somehow get the stars. So this is uh, basically the learning for uh, lab 5. Swap out your asserts. We'll continue the series because this is learning and uh, this is a new uh, kind of uh, method for learning because I'm not only watching the, those those videos, I'm also um, doing the practice and of course, along that way, I'm also recording the radio and my practice together. So um, it may look not that kind of boring and you have the you will also have the opportunity to hear the official uh, voice from the unity so that's good i will see you um in the next one bye